going live, going live, live for the people. I give it back to you, the people. That's a horrible Bane, by the way. <laughs> if you've ever seen Batman, which you probably haven't. I mean, which one? The uh, Batman. Uh, what was it? Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises. It was Dark Knight Rises. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I didn't no. think so. No. <laughs> I really only remember the one with the penguin guy because it scarred me deeply as a child. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anywho, let's uh, get this show on the road. I uh, I actually plan on working on some new production for us. Mm. So, uh, but uh, yeah, let's get started. You're about to witness the strength of creep knowledge. Good evening. Welcome to the 40 and Slip. This is episode 209. Who watches The Watcher? That's right. Who watches The Watcher? Who is The Watcher? I don't know. You don't know. Katie doesn't know. I don't even know why we're discussing it because nobody fucking knows. <clears throat> Jack. How, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Jack. Can you spell it out, like, phonetically in the chat so I can figure it the fuck out? I assume, you're from, I, I, I assume you're from Ireland. Jack uh, joins us almost every week for the live show. Uh, it's been an interesting week. Uh, the Will Smith's saga continues. <sighs> I wish it didn't. <laughs> the best the best meme I saw all week was somebody took Voldemort from Harry Potter. Have you ever seen the Harry Potter movies? Uh, the first one. I took Voldemort from the Harry Potter movies and put Jada Pinkett Smith's head on the body. Oh, no. And put, she who must not be named. <laughs> <laughs> That okay, was my good. favorite fucking one all week. Oh, that's favorite good. fucking one. Uh, anywho, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, old, old Willie uh, resigned from the Academy. And they're still going to do an investigation. The, 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 the aftermath of the whole thing has been really weird. Yeah. Like it's, it's been bizarre. It, yeah. Very, very strange. So. Um, I don't quite get all of that. Um, and the way the 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 people that were running the Oscars like dealt with that, excuse me. Um, anyhow, uh, Jack says it's pronounced Devere. I hope I got that right. Devere. Huh? So Jack Devere. I'm gonna fucking try to remember that, Jack. Usually pretty good at shit like that, but um, yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting week. Um, uh, the the world's the same. Nothing changes. <laughs> Everything's going to hell in a handbasket. I don't know which way is up, which way is down. You know what's going on is. Uh, it, it, is everything going straight to shit? I know that I I see more and more censorship that's leading to people being unpersoned. And it's fucking scary as hell. <clears throat> this idea that they just need to censor people to the point of shutting them down completely. It's it's gross. I don't know how to how how much more I can stress that it's it's scary and it's gross and it's not what this country was founded on and it's happening not just here it's happening everywhere 
Um, so, you know, that type of stuff gets me all fucking, whoo, fucking, ah, scared. Sorry. I get nervous. I get nervous when they want to take away my uh, ability to talk. Yeah. Which, in a lot of ways, I have to be really careful. And I have to be, I have to uh, skate around a lot of shit. In order to be able to put my stuff on all the different platforms that I do. Oh, and it's sad that you have to. And it's fucking horribly sad. I mean, Facebook's coming back. <clears throat> that is fact. The Facebook page has come back uh, like tenfold. Not to where it was. Not even close. But the uh, the Facebook page is definitely back. Um, to a, to a, a big degree. Um now uh you know is is it um am i getting the the action that i was you know before when you know things were going crazy on the page no no not even fucking close <laughs> it's but it's better than what it was it was a horrid bag of shit for a while where posts were getting like maybe 50 likes if that, uh, barely anything reached a hundred, um, <clears throat> you know, nobody was commenting on anything for the most part. I mean, if it was, it was the, it was the, the usual suspects, you know, the normal people that you see every time. Um, so I'm very glad to see that coming back. It has been for a few weeks now. It's not, and like I said, it's not, you know, Fully back to where it was. I wish the fuck it was, but it's not. Um, but I will keep at it for now. Uh, I should be talking to Fred later on this evening. Uh, Katie and I got him photos sent out uh, for the new show art. Uh, I am going to ha have him start on that. Um, I'm hoping he said uh, or his wife told me earlier today that he should be able to start on it tonight. Oh, uh, nice. So I'm really hopeful that I can get everything on the table that I want done with the the image uh, tonight for him so that he can get it laid out and give me a good idea um, of uh, what I'm going to pay him. Fucking pay me. That's what I wanted to say. Pay me, motherfucker. Because <laughs> I will. Because he does good work. So... Uh, I'm hoping that that goes down tonight. I'm pretty sure that it's going to. I let him know that I was doing the show, um, and what my timetable was for that. So we shall see. Um, so hope everybody had a good week. I uh, hope everybody's navigating this, uh, fun time we're all living in where, uh, inflation's going through the fucking roof. Corporations are just fucking enjoying their huge profits while you suffer. <laughs> and they don't give a fuck. They're going to raise those prices, and then when the price of gas goes back down, they'll keep them there. And how do I know this? Because I used to be a salesman, and one of the companies that I worked for was uh, Frito-Lay. And when the gas prices went up at that point in time, and this was a blanket thing because Frito-Lay is under PepsiCo, like, they all went up on their prices because of, quote, unquote, the gas cost to the company. So they, they either uh, lowered the amount of product and kept it at the same price, or they raised the price on the same amount of product. And that never went down. It just stayed there. So, th and this has happened for a long time. It's just that it, right now it's really, really blatant and it's huge. So, you know, welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I hope you're all doing okay. <laughs> I hope you all made it through the winter trying to get fucking heating oil. <laughs> I'm sure that was fun. Uh, so, uh, I came across... Um, a story that we're going to get into tonight is the title, the the title of the episode, uh, The Watcher. Um, I came across that, and I'm I, I want to say 
that we did it, and it may have been when Richard was producer. Yeah, maybe. It could have been then, or maybe it's just something that I saw a long time ago or a while ago and had meant to do. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a show or a story I'm familiar with, but I still I feel like you and I have even discussed it. Yeah, it's po it's very very possible. <clears throat> um, but I I came across it the other day, and I was like, oh. And I, it seemed familiar, so I watched through it, and I was like, yeah, that really seems familiar. Like, I've watched something about that before, or that I did it on the show, or something. <clears throat> and uh, so I watched through a few things, read a few things on it, and it's it's a pretty interesting little story. Um, that I'll leave it at that um, But for now, but it's, it's interesting. Um, and we will get into uh, the news for the night. <laughs> Do, 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 do. All right, from 1079 is hot.com. <clears throat> Haunted doll opens and closes its mouth all by itself. I'm not sure if it makes it worse or not, but it is a ventriloquist doll that opens and closes its mouth all by itself. The story goes that four years ago, Gregor Stewart of Fife, Scotland, bought a ventriqu bleh, ventriloquist doll from a dealer in California. Once back at Stewart's home, the doll began opening and closing its mouth on its own. Furthermore, the mechanism that moves the mouth is broken, so it shouldn't be happening at all. So here's how Stewart came to be in possession of Uncle Herb. Uncle Herb. Uncle Herb. The haunted ventriloquist doll. Yep, the doll has a name. The dealer from California got the doll from a family that wanted to get rid of it after their elderly family member who owned it passed away. She apparently kept him in a cupboard. After the California dealer had Uncle Herb, he began hearing footsteps in his house at night. After eventually moving the doll to the garage, the noises and disturbances continued. That's when he continued to not only put it up for sale, but he would only sell it to someone far away from where he lived. No one, within, no one within California was allowed to purchase the doll. <clears throat> Cut to Gregor Stewart acquiring Uncle, er Uncle Herb. Why Uncle Herb? What about the mouth of his opening and closing? What about the spirit attached to the doll? What does it all mean? Well, according to Mirror, here's what Stewart told them. I think that when Uncle Herb opens his, mo his mouth, it means that he is not happy about something, he said. Sure. Uh, when we first got him, we were putting him in a case on his own for a while to give him time to settle. And that is when his mouth first opened. And by the time we went to get him back out of the case, he had closed his mouth. So I think that when he closes his mouth, it means that he is happy and settled down again. We spoke to the spirit that was attached to the doll through a spirit box, a paranormal research device. <sighs> which allows spirits to communicate by manipulating white noise to form words and phrases and asked what the name was. He told us it was Herbert and we shortened it to Uncle Herb because we know there is a connection to an uncle in his story. The spirit attached to Uncle Herb was frustrated at being forgotten as he had never been given a name and had previously belonged to an elderly, elderly woman who kept him in a cupboard. Since we have had him, <clears throat> he had lots of people engaging with him, and he's been given a name, so there's much more positive energy around him. The Daily Star reports that the haunted ventriloquist doll has referenced prison in conversations. Okay, that's enough, Gregor Stewart. It's obvious that he hasn't seen the 1978 cinematic masterpiece Magic starring a young Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, and Burgess Meredith. And that's the end of the story. I don't understand the the that abrupt ending to the story, but I don't know. that is abrupt. Yeah, it, I, I I don't know. I don't. I'm not a big fan uh, of these haunted item stories, haunted dolls, haunted whatever. Um, no, and I don't know the fact that they like set the doll in a case to let him settle before they ever even saw. That means they were like looking for this doll to be you know housing a spirit you know like 
that's that's the way I took that. Yeah. Before they ever even saw the doll open or close its mouth, they're already saying, oh, we need to put this doll in its own case and let it settle into its new environment. Like, come on. <laughs> Don't touch the glass. <laughs> <laughs> uh next up tonight let's see let's go with this one from three rivers news.com metal sasquatch stolen from park twp family uh park twp as the legend goes sasquatch is an elusive fellow when you think you have him in your sights, he vanishes or is just out of focus. An eight-foot metal version of Sasquatch, one on the Park Township family's property, imitated its namesake this week. However, it was reportedly stolen from the property. The family in question, Mike and Donna Kine, Kin, I don't know, K-I-N-N-E, reported the sculpture, a steel-plated 30-pound sculpture with welded rebar support on the back. Stolen from their property on West End Road in Ta Park Township sometime between Monday evening and Wednesday morning this week. The reported theft is being investigated by Michigan State Police. While the exact way the Sasquatch was stolen has not been officially confirmed by police, Mike, I'm going to say kind, suspected whoever stole it used bolt cutters and handled it pretty carefully, at least to take it from where it was. Somebody had to either have a truck or something, but they pulled up and pulled off the road there. The state police came out and did a report on it. There were tire tracks, Mike said in an interview Thursday. He was chained and locked to a post, so somebody had to have had bolt, bolt cutters and cut the chain. I've never handled him without having my leather, leather gloves on because he's very sharp. They had to want him bad, Donna added. The Sasquatch has been a bit of fun, of fun fixture for the last two years in the neighborhood the kinds are in with the couple reporting many of their neighbors are upset about its suspected theft. The sculpture was one of the family or their neighbors <clears throat> would decorate on holidays, most recently St. Patrick's Day. We even had one anonymous neighbor put a COVID mask on him when COVID started, Mike said. Then we had an anonymous neighbor decorate him for Easter one year, Donna added. One year he had bunny ears on. Mike said he couldn't think of anybody who would want to see the Sasquatch gone or have something against the sculpture. The police asked the same question, but nobody ever complained to us. Everybody thought it was cool how we decorated him up, Mike said. The pair say they are hopeful to get their prized Sasquatch back as soon as possible, with Donna saying she's hoping it was just a prank by a teenager or something similar. I'm hoping there's been some 18-year-old naughty boy that's been eyeballing Sasquatch for a while because somebody had come to come prepared. We're hoping it was some kid pranking. If that's the case, Sasquatch is somewhere and somebody's going to have to get rid of him somehow, Donna said. Ideally, we'd like to see him return and just get him back to us, Mike added. They're also asking the community to be on the lookout if attempts to sell it online are made. If somebody does try to sell it on Facebook Marketplace or on Craigslist or something, we want people to know that it's a red flag, Mike said. He's pretty rare, I'd think. There's only so many metal Sasquatches around. <clears throat> If you have any information, Robert Tomlinson can be reached at 279-7488, extension 22. I guess. I don't know. People are shitty. Yeah, I mean, whether you, know, whether you believe in Sasquatch or not, um, it... it to go and steal somebody's fucking property, it's just bullshit. Yeah. I'd be pissed if somebody even just stole my wooden one. You know? Yeah. Like, like and I mean, it's just wood. <laughs> yeah. Like what what the fuck? Like yeah, do you really fun. need do you really need to to go spoil somebody's fucking good time with their little trinket? Because that's all it really is. Yeah. It's a little trinket. You know, it's not and it's not hurting anybody. Yeah. At least I don't think it's fucking hurting anybody, but. Well, uh, and it does kind of bring the community together. I mean, even just with ours, boats go by. You always see people taking pictures of it and hollering, hey, I love your Bigfoot. And then right. we meet people at the local restaurant. We're like, oh, yeah, we're the ones with the Bigfoot. And they're like, oh, yeah. You know, so it's just a fun, harmless thing for everybody to enjoy. And why does somebody have to be an asshole? It just sucks. Because people, 
because people suck. Because, uh, you know, by and large, people are okay. You know, for a great many people are okay. Yes. But there are a portion of people who suck. And they're not a small, small, small portion. You know, they exist. And they exist everywhere. And among the good people that are out there, there are good people that do shitty things, too. Yeah. That's the other thing. Right. Like That's something that everybody has to remember. There's people that you see each and every day seem like good people that still steal yeah good people do fucked up shit too yeah i mean you know i watched like a shit ton of documentaries i just watched one with this fucking old lady and i was fucking shocked this little old lady you know and it's like you never know ladies and gentlemen you never fucking know so take that as you'd like our uh, next story of the evening from usatoday.com. There are hundreds of undiscovered mammals, and you've probably seen one, new study says. <clears throat> mammals are one of the most widely known animal species with over 5,000 species, including humans, identified on Earth, according to the National Wildlife Federation. Uh, excuse me. But with so much known, a new study suggests there are hundreds of mammals that haven't been scientifically discovered. The research began when Brian Carstens, professor of evolution, ecology, and or organi organismal biology at Ohio State University, wondered if there was a way to find species traits in hidden or unknown species. With the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, Carstens' graduate students were left unable to do any field work, so they focused their attention to closely examining mammals. The team used a supercomputer and machine learning techniques to analyze millions of gene sequences, over 4,000 mammal species, as well as using information on where species lived and their environment. <clears throat> the results allowed scientists to build a model to identify which animals are likely to have a hidden species, a species yet to be scientifically analyzed. Their findings were published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on Monday. This is work that's largely done with genetics with fine-scale examinations of specimens that have already been collected, Carstens told USA Today. The animals likely to be discovered aren't big creatures, nor ones with distinct differences like big cats, bears, or even Sasquatch. Rather, Carstens said, most are likely small creatures like bats, rodents, moles, and shrews. These creatures will mostly be found in tropical rainforests since they aren't easily accessible for humans, but they are likely present in the United States. You've probably seen one of these species, Karsten said. <clears throat> what makes it easier for them to be seen in the U.S. is most species we know have been discovered, but they haven't been researched enough to see if certain population have distinct differences. Karsten's alluded to a 2018 study he was involved in about the little brown bat found throughout the country. Research showed that one species turned out to be five different species of bat. The crazy thing about this is these bats look alike. I can't tell them apart, Karsten said. But genetically, they're almost as distinct like humans and chimpanzees. It is unknown exactly how many mammals haven't been recognized. But Karsten estimates 80% of mammals have been identified already. <clears throat> the new kinds of animals are constantly being discovered throughout the world. In January, the, new, the World Wildlife Fund announced 224 species were discovered in the greater Mekong region in Southeast Asia in 2020. Of the newly discovered species, only one was a mammal, the Papa Langur, a long-tailed monkey with white rings around its eyes. Isn't that cool-looking little monkey? <clears throat> but the Papa Lang Langur was, a na was named a critically endangered species when it was discovered. The yet-to-be-discovered animals could be in a similar situation. As Karstens notes, it is a possibility some species could go extinct before they are scientifically discovered. The team doesn't want to limit their research to just mammals either. They hope to identify more vertebrate species in the future and hope their method will open doors for other kinds of animal discoveries. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it, because you always wonder, like, where evolution... Well, I do, anyway. I wonder, like, where evolution is going. Um... And I we I don't even think we have the the distinct roadmap of where it's been. I don't I don't 
think I don't I think that evolution does happen. I will say that. What I what I don't know is if we know the path that things went. Like that's the that's where I have where it gets wishy washy for me. Yeah. Um, and I I'm not sure that that's all all correct. But uh, but to see that type of stuff in action, uh, there was a story I did a while ago, a long time ago, about uh, little tree lizards down in Florida and how they were evolving at a super high rate because of how fast they breed. And they were trying to avoid predators that had been introduced to the environment. And so the ones that had the bigger pads on their feet that could get higher in the trees were doing better than any of the others. So they were the ones that were surviving. And it was really cool to read about that story because that's evolution in action. Yeah. Um, which I think is ve it's, it's very interesting to see that natural selection happen because of the environment you know it wasn't because you know somebody decided to breed this one with this one right they just that's what that's what made it <laughs> so i thought that was an interesting story i grabbed that one this week uh what else do we got i got a few from ifl science uh, mm, Let's see, we'll go with that one first, I guess. From iflscience.com. AI makes strangely accurate predictions from blurry medical scans, alarming researchers. <coughs> Damn it. Uh, new research has found that artificial intelligence analyzing medical scans can identify the race of patients with an astonishing degree of accuracy, while their human counterparts cannot. With the Food and Drug Administration approving more algorithms for medical use, the researchers are concerned that AI could end up perpetuating racial biases. They are especially concerned that they could not figure out precisely how the machine learning models were able to identify race, even from heavily corrupted and low-resolution images. In the study, published on preprint service ARXIV, an international team of doctors investigated how deep learning models can detect race from medical images. Using private and public chest scans and self-reported data on race and eth ethnicity, they first assessed how accurate the algorithms were before investigating the mechanism. We hypothesized that if the model was able to identify a patient's race, this would suggest the models had implicitly learned to recognize racial information despite not being directly trained for that task, the team wrote in their research. They found, as previous studies had, that the machine learning algorithms were able to predict with high accuracy whether the patients were black, white, or Asian. The team then tested a number of possible ways that the algorithm could glean this information. Among the proposed ideas was that the AI could pick up differences in the density of breast tissue or bone. However, when these factors were masked by clipping pixel brightness at 60% for bone density, the AI was still able to predict with accuracy the self-reported race of the patients. Other possibilities included the AI guessing from regional differences in markers on the scan. Say one hospital that sees a lot of white patients marks their x-rays in a specific style. It may be able to guess from derm demographics. Or that there were differences in how high resolution the scans were when they were taken. For example, deprived areas may not have as good, good equipment. Again, these factors were controlled for, th for, th ugh, for through heavily pixelating, cropping, and blurring the images. The AI could still predict ethnicity and race when humans could not. Even when the re resolution of the scan was reduced to 4 by 4 pixels, the predictions were still better than random chance. <laughs> and by the time resolution was increased to 160 by 160 pi pixels, accuracy was over 95%. That's fucking crazy. That's fucking scary they could it can literally tell your race by a pixelated x-ray scan i'm not gonna oh. go any further with that story i think it goes a little longer but that it's that's fucking weird well my brain's kind of stuck on something so they're saying that they did not direct this artificial intelligence to point this out at all it just did it on its own right um, no, I think the, what is, 
It was worded awkwardly. No, I th I think they actually. I, I think that they were, they were, they were trying they were trying to see if people could yeah it it was what they they made it to do okay from what I gather it just did it way more successfully and they have right. no idea why yeah wow it's pretty nuts it's pretty fucking nuts it's it's like the thing that uh, sci-fi movies are made of <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Our next story of the evening from Newsweek.com. Scientists broadcast, broadcast Earth's location to aliens, ignoring Stephen Hawking's warning. Scientists have designated a radio message to be beamed into deep space that is meant to be received and they hope understood by an intelligent alien civilization. The message is essentially an updated version of the famous Arecibo message transmitted in 1974, which had the same purpose. Broadcast from the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico, the message consisted of 1,679 bits arranged into 73 lines of 23 characters. The message was transmitted in binary code, ones and zeros. Once decoded, the message forms a visual graphic consisting of a stick figure of a human, as well as representations of our solar system, DNA, and the Arecibo Telescope. Now scientists have designated, designed a new message to improve upon the Arecibo transmission called the Beacon in the Galaxy message. It contains more information about basic mathematics and science than the Arecibo message did. It is hoped that these concepts will be universally understood by life forms of at least similar intelligence to humans. <clears throat> and that one goes on and on and on and on and on about how Stephen Hawking said that we shouldn't contact fucking aliens. <laughs> I think if we fucking contact aliens, we're going to contact aliens regardless. It's just, it's either going to happen or it isn't. Uh, and I don't even think them trying is necessarily going to help or hinder. You know, I think it's, like I said, it's either going to have, it's, we're either going to be in the right place at the right time. You know, it's, it's going to be one of those situations. In my opinion. What do you think, Katie? Uh, I don't know. It seems wild to me to think that if there is some other intelligent force out there, who's going to say that they even in a similar, that they're even going to be able to interpret those things, you know? Right. They may have a completely different communication form that, what did they use? Bi uh, the ones and zeros things, what do you call that? Binary. Yeah, binary code. We're just assuming that they're going to know that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> they say mathematics is universal. Well, yeah, but For I all... don't necessarily think that their symbols for it and their representation for oh, it. Oh, yeah, no, a be the absolutely. Same. But they may be able to figure that out. Oh. No, that's true. Um, they may, you know, cause we figure a lot of weird shit out. Yes, that is true. You I don't know, know. I'm just able... kind of cynical with that stuff. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, there's been many things that we've deciphered over the years and some of them improperly too. Right. You know, for the record, like there's been a lot of things that we've deciphered improperly. So, um, I, I, I would think, though, that if if there's a sufficiently uh, advanced civilization out there, you know, close to us or above us, beyond us, whatever, however you want to fucking call it, um, and they were to come across this message, they'd probably be able to figure it out. Yeah. You know, to some degree. Um, but there's, I think there's always going to be barriers. You know, there's, it's 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 going to be a weird thing. And it's going to change everything when it happens. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, I think I'm going to let that wrap up the news for tonight. Um, so we can jump into the story of The Watcher. Um, this story is fucking huge. Um, and I don't want to go crazy like reading um, 
everything uh, about it uh, because it's it, we'd be here for hours yeah it's got quite the timeline on it <laughs> yeah um so i just i like i said i came across this the other day the story about this family that brought bought their dream house and then started getting these creepy letters um from this person calling themselves the watcher um and i watched a couple of videos read a few things on it and was like what the fuck because it's a it's a twisty turny type of thing you know you don't know who's you know who's really doing what uh there's a little tomfoolery and shenanigans that have been, that went on but at the same time um yeah i i don't know it's it's odd it's an odd one uh, and it's so, still really an unsolved mystery right they don't know who the watcher is so uh derek broadus and his wife maria um bought this house on 657 boulevard uh and did it, did it, did it, where is that? What boulevard is that? I think the name of the road was Boulevard. 657 Boulevard. Yeah. Um, in New Jersey. Uh, where in New Jersey was the fucking thing? In Westfield? Westfield, yeah. Westfield, New Jersey. Um, and Maria had grown up a couple of blocks from this house. And I guess this house was like their fucking dream house. Uh, and her dream house especially. Because she was back in her neighborhood. Um, they get there. And they have uh, some kids. Um, they get there. And. They get this. Uh, they go out to do their mail. But they're doing some. Re re uh, renovations before they moved in. So they found. A few bills. And a white card shaped envelope. And it was addressed in thick. Clunky handwriting to the new owner. Um, and it said, uh, dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Uh, 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now. And it, as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? <clears throat> Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Uh... There was other stuff that he wrote in there as well. I'm trying to skip through the article because this thing is fucking huge. Um, he talks about the kids. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is in another, another letter or not. Like I said, I'm trying to skip through this fucking thing. Yeah, I think so, there was another letter before they actually moved in. Yeah, and uh, but it says the letter continued. 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic, or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and, and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the watcher and have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. 
I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too, Bradus family. And he spelled it wrong. B-R-A-D-D-U-S, and it's spelled differently. Uh, welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. Um, and there was a, a letter that they wound up finding out went to the previous owner right before they moved in. Um, do, 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 do. I'm trying to find the next part of the letters. Yeah, it's 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 really hard to fucking find find all the shit in this fucking article. I actually tried to look up just what was in the letters and get a, a concise just the letters, and I couldn't find it. I looked and looked and looked. I googled it and googled it and googled. It. I mean, maybe somebody else would have a better better luck at it than than I did. But I looked to try to find it before the show so that I would have it to be able to read, and I could not find it. Well, I think after that one you just read, that was the second one. And then they decided not to move in as they had planned. And then he wrote another letter kind of acknowledging like, oh, are you scared? Well, they did have the kids there at one point because there was one letter which he referenced. One of the girls was painting on the porch and he referenced her painting in the letter. Right, because the they, they hadn't moved in yet. They had bought the property, but they were still fixing it up. So they would come there on the weekends and stuff and yeah. bring the kids, and they'd all spend a bunch of time there. But they hadn't actually moved in yet. And they had a plan to, but they stopped it because of these letters, obviously. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a very, very strange story all in all. And, and it gets even weirder because they tried to get uh, an exemption to like split the house in two and make two houses on the lot but they were like three feet short of what the town required them to do that so they had to go before the board and then they were they the town rejected it but another house was able to do the same thing in the town with like less footage <laughs> It sounded to me like it was kind of even more of a like housing association bullshit. Like, I don't think it was even necessarily the town's rules. It was like the subdivision rules and the subdivision wouldn't let it go. Yeah, it's really, it, but it's so it's kind of weird. I don't know. And the whole watcher thing, um, they thought it might be fucking, uh, the, the Langfords, I guess, who were next door, but they and they found some female DNA in one of the letters, but they had it tested and it turned out not to be the dude's sister uh, who they thought it was. Um, it, it's a very fucking in-depth story. It, if you want to go diving into it, it's fucking crazy. Well, and wasn't it fairly a modern story? Like, what year did this take place? Wasn't it like 2005 or something? He, he, he was, or he or she was active as, as uh, recently as like uh, 2017, I think they said in the, the That's Buzz crazy. Beat. This sounds yeah. like more like something you'd hear in like the 60s or 70s or something, but that's yeah. just super creepy. Yeah, I like I said, when I came across it, I was like, what? And then I remembered hearing about it. I was like, oh, I know I've heard this story. I've I've definitely come across this before. But uh, you know, what you know, what's the you know, what's the deal? So I, I fucking popped it on, started watching and listening, and, and I was like, Oh yeah. And fucking it I've been I spent, you know, since like when did I message you about it? Uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah, so I've since yesterday, I've been pouring over shit about it. So is that house still sitting empty today? Uh, I believe they've sold it finally. 
I'm pretty sure they've sold it. I looked in. I looked up. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me see. Let me Google it. Watch your house. Uh, letters. That way it'll pop up. Uh, yeah, in 2019, it says it was sold. Oh. Derek and Maria Broadus moved all. This was a CNN article. One family's nightmare is over. They finally sold the home where they were terrorized by letters from the watcher. Derek and Maria Broadus moved all their belongings into the Westfield, New Jersey home between June and August 2014, but they never lived there because of the threatening letters. The couple bought the home for one million three hundred fifty-five thousand six hundred fifty-seven. They spent about one hundred thousand on renovations. Court documents show they even attempted to get permission from the city's planning board to raise the house and divide the property into two lots. However, they were denied and put the house on the market. They sold it in early July for approximately nine hundred and fifty nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred and fifty nine thousand, according wow. to Zilla. Um, yeah. So yeah. So they were able hit. to sell it. They were able to sell it. And I, I'm pretty sure somebody rents it out now. Wow. Yeah, but it's a it was a really like very, very strange story. Yeah, that's super Just, weird. Like, who the fuck does that shit? For one. Like, like like it is. It's something you'd expect to read in an in a novel or see in a creepy TV show. Yeah. It's not something you'd expect to happen <clears throat> in everyday life. It's just not. Yeah, I, I, oh. And people, I get, but I guess people are creepy. You know, there are creepy people out there, obviously. Well, I mean, there I are think people get off on being creepy. Oh, yeah. And I don't know anymore. Like, I'm, I'm confused about the world. <laughs> I'm just fucking confused about the world and about people. I, I I thought I understood how people work and how people were, and you know I thought I had a good read on people, but I don't. I don't. <laughs> I learned that. I learned that I don't because I thought I did. But you know, people will fuck you. They'll turn around and fuck you every goddamn time. So, I don't know, but this uh, this story was one where I was just like, you know, this type of stuff fucking happens. You know, these fucking weird-ass stalker fucking people. And those are the creepy types of stories. Oh, yeah. You know? And I, I've said this before, and I will say it again. We talk about, like, strange creatures on this show, and... You know, monsters and shit like that. I'll tell you right now, people are the real monsters. Oh, yeah. We're the strange ones. Yeah, we're the strange creatures. We're the fucking creepy monsters. You know, the, you want to you want to find monsters, go fucking join the goddamn FBI and profile serial killers. You know, that's where you find monsters. And let me tell you, that shit will fucking scare you when you really look into it. Like, I would not want to be a dude that looks into that. Like, I watch a shit ton of that stuff. And I get creeped out by it every so often when they get really graphic about stuff. There was one time they were, uh, I was watching a documentary about BTK. And they were discussing and or talking about what he did to the daughter of the first family, I think, that he killed down in the basement. And that shit just put me on edge. Yeah. And I can't imagine being the fucking, being the detective that has to look at those scenes and see all of those scenes and put all those pieces together. Like yeah. that type of, sh that's, yeah, you want to, you want to hunt monsters. You want to go check out monsters. That's where you look. That's where the monsters are. And you want to see strange fucking creatures that live on planet earth? Go look in the ocean. Right. 
That's where all the strange shit is. And yes, like I, I did a story earlier. There all kind. There are going to be all kinds of fucking un, you know, documented frigging creatures that are out there, species, news. But like that article was saying, not what we think. It's going to be like some weird little thing. You know, some weird little genetic offshoot. Nah, but that's also fascinating and interesting. And we, we, I think that's the other thing that we have to stop doing as human beings. We have to stop needing to be so impressed. Yeah. We need to lower our expectations <laughs> a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can remember like when I was a young kid and I went to see, went to Disney. And I remember all the, uh, all the uh, advertisements and all the commercials for Disney and all the things you would see on TV for Disney and how amazing it made Disney look. And then I got there and I was like, this looks nothing like that. <laughs> like it's cool and it's neat, but it looks nothing like that. Like they really dressed that shit up. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you get there and you're like, Oh, this is just, it's fucking like, shit at home oh but they you know they do it a little better and you know it just uh, they, they they it we need we need to stop you're right we need to lower our expectations on things and everybody does it like i said i just gave you an, a, a situation where i did it and i still do it i still fucking do it um but I don't know. The world where we're going right now. I don't know. World War Three gonna happen, Katie? Is World War Three um, still happening? I I can't say it's not. I mean <laughs> at this point I one one week I hear fucking the Russians and fucking Ukrainians are gonna talk peace. The next week I hear there's mass genocide somewhere in Ukraine. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. And I don't and I'm gonna be honest with you. And, you know, I've said this, I will say it a million times. I, I think that war is horrible and what has happened to the Ukrainian people is horrible. It's, I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. When it comes to these stories that come out, because it, there's so much horse shit that surrounds this war and there's so much propaganda on our side, on their side. On Russia's side, it's just propaganda. Yep. And I don't trust any of it. I, I You know, I, I said this a few episodes ago. When you see Democrats and Republicans agreeing on shit, I'm sorry, that sounds cynical, but that's when you need to worry. Because they never fucking agree on anything. They fucking disagree all the time. When they start agreeing on shit, and especially when it comes to war, that's when we all need to be like, ooh, yee. That's when shit's scary. And this idea of censoring people because they have different ideas or different viewpoints or because they fucking have discussions, for fuck's sake. What does that mean about this, this, the, the future of fucking podcasting? Right. What I do. What you do, basically. You, you're here. <laughs> well, and it's scary because what does that say for society? Because, I mean, sure, they say, oh, you know, all these social media platforms are technically a private business and a private space and they can police what's on there and this and that. But yeah. they claim to be a place that bring people together and stuff like, well, what do people do when they come together? They, they, they stopped, talk about shit. They stopped uh, they stopped being that a long time ago and, yeah. and, and started being a, a huge platform. It needs to be like. I hate to say it, but it kind of needs to be like the telephone company. Like where you can just say you, they can't monitor your conversation and make in. Well, they can like through like wiretapping and shit like that, but you're allowed to say whatever the fuck you want on the phone to somebody else. Yeah. Like that's just the way that it is. Um, and 
they, they've, they've just got to stop this. This whole fucking dumbing down of shit and policing and big daddying of America. Uh, it bothers me on such a level. And it frightens me. It frightens me because I, I worry that I won't be able to do the things that I enjoy anymore. You know, the, being able to do this the way that we do. And there's already things about this that I have to do differently that I don't like. Yeah. Like I have to preface shit with, oh, I have to say this or else they could possibly take my shit down. Yeah. And that's not fun. Because I shouldn't have to preface anything by saying that. You should just know by inference, by knowing me and knowing how I talked about the thing, that I think that anyway. But you can't because God almighty, you know, anything can be taken out of fucking context and thrown in your fucking face nowadays. Oh. Oh. So, anywho... I think I'm gonna wrap the this week's episode up. It was a, I don't know, a weird week for me. It was a out of sorts. Got a lot going on. A lot going on in the background. Word. Not a lot of fun things going on in Chris's life, but I, as always, fucking persevere. Fucking whatever. Gotta keep on keeping on. Um, Amy Exhale says thanks. Oh, you are welcome. Um, we will be back next week, next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with another episode of the 40 and Slip. Until said time, uh, you all have a wonderful week. Be good to one another. And see ya! <laughs>